law of wealth, electromagnetic induction. What does fire this days? In 1831, Michael Faraday, an English physicist, gave one of the most basic laws of wealth, electromagnetic induction, called Faraday's law of wealth, electromagnetic induction. Let's look at if you look at that diagram, you see different um diagrammatic uh illustration of our electromagnetic induction but let's go to what we're actually talking about now this law explains the working principles of most of the what electric motors generation you know i spoke about that initially generators electrical transformers and the what inductors now this law shows the relative and relationship between electric circuits and your magnetic field now faraday performs an experiment with a magnet and a coil are you seeing it now he performed an experiment with the magnet and the coil. Now, during this experiment, he found how EMF is induced in the coil. Are you seeing it? Magnets, north pole, south pole, coil. There is a coil in between. What will happen here? Naturally, those magnets what we want to attract. Now, they call this what? Magnetic flux. So, this coil will work. be breaking down magnetic flux. Now, at the end of the day, PDF, I mean, potential difference, so EMF will be induced at the edge of the world. Point. Now, let's go to the first law of Faraday's law. Any change in the world, magnetic field of a coil of wire will cause an EMF to be induced in the coil. Any change in the magnetic field. Now, this is the magnetic field. Let's assume the coil are not coming. They are there. Now, the magnetic flux is actually trying to work bound together the two words, magnet. Now, if you now have a change by what? By what? Inserting in, in of what? The coil in between. Do you understand? This coil tends to rotate. Let's say it's rotating this way. Now, this coil tends to break, be breaking the magnetic flux. So, as it's breaking the magnetic flux, what happens? Potential difference is induced. Do you understand? That's what the law is saying. Any, any force that tends to change the what? The position of the what? Magnet in the magnetic field. EMF will be what produced. Not just any particular material, but what? A coil. That is the first law. This EMF induced is called induced EMF. EMF induced here, I mean, produced is called induced. Induced EMF. Let's go to the second law. The second law states that the magnitude of the EMF induced in the coil is equal to the what? To the rate of change of the flux that that links with the word to the coil. What are we saying? Number one law. If you change the position of the magnetic field, you understand, in terms of what? They are flux combination. What happens? EMF is being produced. That's the first law. This is that second law. Second law says that the, the magnitude of the EMF produced is directly proportional to the word, to the speed of the coil that is causing the flux. That is, the higher the speed, the higher the word, EMF that will be produced. Let me read it again. It states that the magnitude of EMF induced in the coil is equal to the rate of change. Do you understand? Of the flux that links the what? The coil. So the more the what? Cutting of flux, the more the what? EMF that will be induced. We go to the. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. It's just two laws. We said the first one. If you change the what? Magnetic field in, in a what? I mean, if you change the magnet in the magnetic field by trying to what? Break the flux. EMF is induced. Now, the more the EMF. Do you understand? The more the what? The speed of the coil. Let's proceed to consider a magnet approaching towards the coil. So if you, if you go through that, you realize the, the actual formula. Do you understand? When it comes to what? Transformer illustration. So the rate of change of flux linkage. So the formula you use the rate of change of flux linkage is given as is given as your n. Your n defined over dt now what is your defi I and mean, what is phi phi is what flux linkage are you getting it or just say magnetic flux so you can see in physics now we are going more advanced as we are saying now this magnetic flux that is being produced is actually being calculated now your n your n here is what your number of what number of tons when i say number of tons I'm talking about the number of tons that your what uh, uh, the coil is having. Shake it so you can calculate all that. So we will be using this formula, but not now. 
So you can note that somewhere. Well, if you have been asked what is the formula for the rate of change of flux linkage, you just give them n dt d phi over what dt. So you can see that. So let's quickly go to what is meant by Fleming's left and round, uh, right row. Fleming's left hand row and Fleming's right hand row. Now you can go through that yourself. If you take your left hand, this is my left hand. Now if you place it this way, to place it this way, just this way, you notice that I have my I have my three fingers here. I was in it. I have my thumb. I have my fourth finger, I have my what? first finger, this is the fourth finger, this is um, the first finger. Now, for my thumb, my thumb is representing motion, let me draw it, this is the hand, we have the first one that goes, and we have another one that comes this way. Now, this thumb, this is the thumb, thumb represents motion, the motion at which your, probably your coil goes, you understand? The fourth finger talks about the force. Shake it. Fourth finger talks about force. While your what? Your second finger talks about your what? Your current. So meaning that if I place my hand this way, you need to get it. If I place my hand this way, if the motion of the coil is going this way, not the motion is going this way, obeying this thumb. Hmm? Now, my fourth finger is going this way. Force will be generated this way. Why your current will be generated this way? That is the magnetic field. This is the force. That is the magnetic field. This is my thumb, where my motion goes. Now this is my... So it means that my current goes this way. If I turn it this way, my motion is going this way. You understand? My what? My current will be formed here. So it's just a, a very good analogy. It's a, it's a very good um, understanding if you can actually go through it. You can go through your flaming left hand room and also go through your flaming right hand room. They are very, very much... Uh, perfectly explained. application of Faraday's law. Faraday's law could be used in your electric transformers, it could also be used in your what? Uh, electrical generators, it could also be used in your induction cookers, it can also be used in your what? Electromagnetic flow meters. Now without wasting much of our time, let's quickly fire into our what? AC generator or alternator. What is an alternator? It's a simple form of what? AC generator. Shown below. Now I do something similar. Look at it. Are we seeing it? That's uh, for the first magnetic bar. We have something like this. Now the second one goes this way. This is north. This is south. Now, in between, we have what we call that is the coil I'm talking about. It comes out like this. Now it has two brushes. We call it a uh, split ring. This is slip rings. You get these are slip rings. Let's look at um, what an AC generator is. Now it's a simple form of AC generator is shown below. Now the coil that's the rotor. That's the coil that turns. Are you seeing it now? The coil that's the rotor. It rotates between the what poles. Are you seeing it? Poles of a DC electromagnet electromagnet that is energized by the field coil. Now the EMF generator is taken from the end of the coil. EMF will be generated here. Are we seeing it now? Now, as the coil rotates, it cuts through the lines of the what, magnetic flux. This producing an EMF. Do you understand? Now, the variation of which is shown below. So, as it cuts, it will be cutting. If you check the second diagram, you discover that there are flux. Those flux are linking your knot and the south. So, as it cuts that flux, EMF is being what, generated. A more smoother output is obtained by having a number of coils. Wounded on the what iron core, which is what laminate will produce eddy current. So you can see it's very easy now. From there, we can now say that EMF generated can be given as what minus n the what 5 over dt. 
I've given this formula before. So the EMF generated can be given as what? Well. Your number of tongue divided over what? The T. She understand? So where this particular one is what we call rate of flux linkage. So forgive me, the other time we spoke about um, this particular formula, it is what we have here is what? This is the rate of flux linkage. Then this number of tons and this is the EMF that will be produced. So let's proceed, let's produce so that we'll be able to go further. Now let's go to inductance. Inductance. Now in our inductance, what do we have? We said if the current through a coil is altered, then the flux through that coil will change and this will induce an EMF in the coil. You know, here we are looking at the number of tons of the coil. But let's look at the number of tons of what? Inductor. So in the, in, in the inductor, now instead of we having number of tons, you have what? L. That's the inductor. The phi over dt. It's as simple as ABC. So instead of we using coil, we using what? Inductors. You understand? So the energy form in an inductor now. The energy form in an inductor is also easy. Just the energy equals half L, L, um, F, half L I squared. That's the energy induced in a what? In an inductor. Now, what is inductance? Inductance is defined as inductance of a coil in which an EMF of 1 volt is induced when the current charges at the rate of 1 ampere per second. Do you understand? It is the what? Induction that is what? Induced. When an EMF of 1 volt is induced, do you understand? When the current changes at the rate of what? 1 ampere per second. So that's